This lesson is on the fourth and final Logard, Chingya de Portivero, or Wild Boar. Uh, this is actually the longest guard, has the most things it can do, which is uh, unlike in previous iterations with sword, light cell, sword dagger, it tended to be the shortest section after Ali Cormo. This one is actually quite long. There's a lot of things we can do here. So we're starting here, cloak is already quite high. If a Madrido comes in, we want to get in there and thrust or cut. Uh, he specifically mentions the Uriverso being first, as that's probably more likely and also much harder for them to defend. So make this step in, cut that leg, and then get out of there. We can also just use a thrust. It doesn't really specify what kind it is. Between the Stokada and the, the Punta Reversa. So I gotta make sure that I'm kneading, thrusting, and getting out of there. You can also just use face guard. So it's a nice standby. And leave. Mandrit all low. We pull the left leg out of the way. Thrust to the face. Cut to the arm from the other side. Whatever is convenient. With a high reverse, so we have a couple options here, or rather a few options. Is my first one is I can use the cloak to defend here. Now, when I do this, it's just gonna be like the last one. The reverse of the leg is gonna be the most obvious option, the better option because it's much harder for me to deal with, especially since I can't really see it. So, cut to the thigh, or we can also just thrust to the chest side, uh, if that makes more sense in the, in the situation. And now we want to get out of there, coming back to guard. We could use the squalimbro, this half squalimbro, beat thrust out of there. We could also just use our good friend Entrare, which is very definitive and very authoritative. If the Oroso is low, we want to use the Ridopi to cover and come forward with, a, with an Imbrocata and then get back out of there. Dealing with Imbrocata and Spokata is where we have a lot of options more so than any other card. So against the Imbrocata, I can use the False Edge. The usual thing a little bit tricky is I want to cut to the thigh and then get my cloak covering my head. So the timing here is pretty specific. So we beat, we start, I will hit my own, hit my own ceiling, beat, start, and make sure this is in the way. Try that again. So we're here, we're going to beat the, beat the Imbrocata, start the attack, keep this in the way, and then keep going. A little better would be using my true edge. So it's a little safer, and it's something we're very familiar with, so we just beat, thrust, and get out of there. We could also, if I am presenting this, this opening, do the outside slip. But again, it's only there if I'm really tight here, it's not gonna happen. So I need to allow it, that space allows an opportunity. Otherwise, it, just, it won't be there. Spokata, our final attack we're dealing with, we can use Entrave. We can use the outside slip. Again, if it's there, we can use our true edge. Which again is very similar to Entrave, but the idea is that it's beat then thrust, not so it's here's Entrave, one, and here is 
truer defense than thrust. And we can also use false edge, which he implies we bind and we turn our hand upwards to his unicorn position and in Mercato. So that was regarded the most possibilities, all of which we've seen before in previous iterations, whether it's sword in one hand or sword and dagger. So all that's left is the two Ali Kortland guards, right and left foot forward. Uh, let's get out of that.